Sometimes you ask yourself the most unrealistically things ever. For example, what would happen if you remove the fans on your graphics card? Well, I did think about that and well, this happened. This is an MSI RTX 2070 Super Trio X graphics cards, one of the best models around, and all three fans have been removed. Also, I removed the plastic shroud to give the heatsink the best possible chance of cooling the graphics core and the VRM components. What is left on this graphics card is the heatsink which is contacting the before mentioned graphics core and the VRM components. Also, the backplate is left there and in essence, the only thing that were removed were the plastics, fans, fan shroud and especially the RGB plate on the edge. Testing is simple, no need for complex benchmarks. We first load format to heat up the graphics card and we run the software for around 6 minutes at a time with the ambient temperature set at 20 degrees celsius and with no fans installed the graphics card quickly reached a maximum temperature of 88 degrees celsius and a minimum temperature of 37 degrees celsius however this is with a synthetic benchmark that is designed to heat up the graphics card what about a video game and what better choice than the newly released halo infinite in this game the temperature quickly started to rise and stabilized at 83 degrees celsius with the same 20 degrees celsius ambient temperature and if we have the fans and fan shroud back on the heatsink, what do we have? First, with Furmark we have a maximum temperature of 65 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. So basically a mere 23 degrees Celsius difference between no fans and all three fans barely spinning. And what about gaming? In the same game and in the same part of the story, the maximum temperature reached was 63 degrees Celsius, a temperature difference that is in line with what we have seen while using Formac to heat up the graphics card. The first thing that we've learned in this is that the heatsink and the cooling system outside of the fans is well made, enough to be able to cool the graphics card with no direct airflow present. However, I will not recommend you to do this at all. Pushing the temperature can cause premature wear on the components of the graphics card and believe me, in the today's market even a used graphics card is going to be a pretty penny. Another thing that we've learned with this test is that whomever designed the cooling system for this graphics card knew what they were doing and did their job well, so how about that? And finally, why did I even do this? Well, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of good ideas started with the sentence, this might sound stupid but hear me out. And nobody did this on a high power graphics card, so I figured that it was a way for the universe to tell me that I was the one to do it. So I did. Now, why didn't I show you how to take out the fans? Simple. Because now that you have this video to satisfy your curiosity, it means that you should not mess with your graphics card at all. If your graphics card has load fans, you can simply create a custom fan profile with MSI Afterburner, but removing the fans? Forget about it. Too many things can go wrong with it and it's for the best that I didn't show you how I did it, even though it's a straightforward process of just removing some screws. I hope this video was useful or at least entertaining. I'm going to be going back to do proper reviews pretty soon and that would be tomorrow.